Okay, so this is E3720 V8 lecture one. So today we're going to do chapter nine, which is root locus design or design using root locus. So the main concepts behind this chapter are basically three things. Right? Number one is what is called as the PI controller, right? KP, which is written as KP plus KI over S, but this can also be written as KP times S plus KI over KP over S. Okay, so if you simplify this out, you get this expression. But basically, this is an example of what is called as a lag compensator. But then, this is not usually referred to as a lag compensator. The general form of the lag compensator is, whoops, this K times S plus ZC over S plus PC, where the pole or the zero, which is negative ZC, is to the left, so on the complex plane, is to the left of the compensator pole, which is at minus P sub C, according to what I have here. Okay? Again, just to be clear, uh, technically, this is the lag compensator. This is called the ideal PI compensator. And this is obviously used to improve steady state error. Okay, Actually, again, this is used to improve steady state error. This is used to eliminate steady state error for depending on the type of the system, of course. Uh, but Anyway, this deals with steady state error. Okay. Then the next one is the PD controller of S. Okay. So this can be written as S plus KD. Okay. So, in other words, what we have is the derivative term. So, this is also called as the lead compensator. Oops. So this is lead of S, which is K times S plus ZC over S plus PC. And here, the zero minus ZC is to the right of pole negative PC, the compensator. And shortly, we will see why this is called lead and lag in the sense it, it refers to, the reason why they're called that way is due to, I'll mention it now, the uh, leading or lagging of the output function when the input function is a sinusoid. So, and then actually to be consistent with what I've just written, so let's do this as S plus ZC, okay? And then so the, this is the PD controller, sorry, uh, the ideal proportional derivative, uh, proportional derivative, okay? And this is the lead compensator, actually to be even more consistent to keep up with this. Uh, so that's what I was thinking. So this can be called KP plus SKD. There you go. That's what I was looking for. And then if you factor out a KD, you get S plus KP over KD. There you go. And then finally, you have the PID controller, which is the lag lead compensator. So you have KP plus KI over S plus SKD, and this is the lag lead compensator. Okay. So obviously it's going to be a pro. It's going to be K times um, the lead time, the lag times the lead, the appropriate choice of zero and pole locations. But we will see this. Um, lag lead in subsequent 
uh, lectures. So this is also called the PID controller. And again, this is the this is a lag lead compensator. But anyway, so let's look at why this is called as a, so today we are simply going to cover the PI controller, which is KP plus KI over S and the lag compensator, which is K times S plus ZC over S plus PC with this condition that the zero negative ZC is to the left of the pole negative PC, P sub C. So why is this called as a lag compensator? So consider just for argument's sake, KP equals zero or without loss of generality, KI equals one. So what you get is a pure integrator in the time domain. So if I send in a sine function, what I get out is negative cosine, but negative cosine can one way to write it is negative sine of 90 minus T, which is negative sine of negative T minus 90. And since sine is odd, this is equal to sine of T minus 90. So this implies the output lags lags input in phase and hence the term lag compensator okay and we could do a similar sorry thing for the lead compensator which i'm not going to do in, in a subsequent lecture it's obvious why it's called as a lag compensator now let's look at an example from your book so this is example 9 1 in the sense what we're going to do is we're going to first design a simple p controller so let me put this as kp okay s plus 1 s plus 2 s plus 10 okay, so here is r here is c so what we're going to do is we're going to look at so here are here's the problem spec in the sense design so design kp such that closed loop system has a damping ratio zeta let me go into the book here wrong chapter I have the book open on my other computer so let's see da, 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 da. come on come on come on come on uh, okay so point one seven four that's what I was looking for so this is what we want okay so that's party but notice that the system is of type zero so solution there's a solution so note that system is type 0 hence uh, e steady state error due to step is not equal to 0 so you have a finite steady state error and we'll fix that later by adding an integral integral term but for now uh, what we need to do is we need to pick kp such that uh, closed loop system has a or pick KP. So it's the design problem. So pick KP such that closed loop system has a zeta of that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the whole root locus shebang from the previous chapter. So I'm going to pause the lecture, work on my solution, and then we'll you work on your solution. So you're watching the video, and then we'll check our answer in MATLAB. Okay, continuing. So hopefully this was pretty quick in the sense that. Uh, the root locus criterion gives us here's the root locus criterion for our system it gives us this nice root locus plot and uh, for this zeta i've computed the corresponding theta as approximately 80 degrees so here is the 80 degree line and you can see our uh, root locus does have two complex conjugate poles and hopefully these are the dominant ones and for quickly sketching the root locus i've computed the asymptotes over here but you need to basically compute the breakaway point, which I have not labeled, which is over here. So this is the breakaway point. And check stability using Routh, okay? So recall that on the exam, although I'll ask you to do both of these, all right, if 
find the angle, sketch me the root locus. Because after this, we need to uh, basically use graph paper and figure out where the closed loop poles are. But in my case, mohaha, I will use MATLAB and CISO tool. So here it is. Okay. So if you notice that here's our root locus, and I've found that for 0.174 dampening, I have the closed loop poles, the dominant, and you can see that these are dominant because these I don't have any uh, zeros, closed loop zero, finite, any finite closed loop zeros. So the third pole is obviously the real part. Magnitude is five, much greater than five times the magnitude of the real part of the dominant one. So this is uh, these are our dominant poles in this case, and you can see the dampening is pretty nice. So I'm, I want to pick one of these values. So negative 0.692 plus 3.93j, plug it into my root locus criterion, and you can see that this is my value of k that will satisfy the given design constraint that is a damping ratio of 0.174, whatever percent overshoot that corresponds to. And if you check MATLAB, here it is. You can see it is point. Um, I get 164. Oops, I hate this when Windows does this. 164.84, very close. Okay. So that's good, but now, and since the system is type zero, as we discussed, we do have a finite steady state error due to step. So let's say, let's do this ideal PI controller and then talk about the lag compensator. That is, let's say we want to have steady state error due to step tending to zero. Therefore, what we're gonna do is we're going to increase the system type. So here is our new system. And then let me write it out like I wrote them in the controller, like I've done before. But now, I'm running out of space, that's for sure. Here is my system. Here is R. Here is C. Input and output. But now what we're going to do is, oh God, so pause the lecture and fix this. Okay, continuing. We basically want the switch error to go to, due to a step to go to zero. So we increase system type. But now I'm going to use the MATLAB notation when I draw the root locus with the compensator poles and zeros added in. So, in other words, the plant poles and zeros, in this case, we only have finite poles, are going to be in black. And then the compensator poles are going to be in, poles and zeros are going to be in red. So, if this is our compensator pole at zero. Okay, that. I have to place it zero because we want the steady state error due to step to go to zero, so we are increasing our system type. But let's say we obviously don't want to affect the transient response. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to place the compensator pole very, very close. And how close is close? Well, it depends on the design constraint. Very, very close to our uh, compensator pole. So if we do that, so let me write this in a different color. Note that our choice of placing the compensator zero very close, so I'll put very close in quotes, and what is very close depends on the design constraint, or the physical implementation constraints, very close to the compensator zero implies that Kp is going to be approximately equal uh, to our K. So going back, So how do how close are we to our transient response spec? 
so let so let, let us pick ki over kp as 0.1 let's say okay so this is just a, the choice that we made therefore and we can check if our kp is going to be approximately k in other words if we are using and we are using root locus yes we have root locus as a function of one parameter so we need to have only one unknown in our block diagram and it should be again so let's do this let's put this like that and then check I'm going to do this in MATLAB. Okay. So let's go to MATLAB and then add the compensator um, zero very close to the compensator pole. This is so annoying. This is not responding. Hopefully, it's saved. Yes, it's safe. sweet. Okay, so let's go into MATLAB now, and then see what happens. I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna add a real pole. Okay, so this is obviously. Oh, by the way, you can go. One thing I like about CISO tool is that I can configure. You can see obviously the root locus is completely bonkers, but anyway, I can go to edit CISO tool preferences, and I always like to see the options as uh, zero pole gain format not time constant format keeping with what we how we discussed the lag compensator recompensator etc jesus there so if i go back here so i have my pole i want it to be at zero okay pure integrator but then let me add Zero, 0 and I said let's put it at negative point 0.1 and then let's pick this to be 164.87 again this is I'm just going to quickly check this in MATLAB and if you notice let me see where are my close to pull so you can see I have it very very close okay uh, but the damping is not 0.104, and you can actually find out, uh, therefore, if SD were still negative 0.692 plus or minus um, 0.393J, well, I take it back in the sense the root locus may not pass through that point, but then let's increase the gain. So I want a damping ratio of 0.174. Let's increase this a little bit and see how the gain changes. So going up a little bit. So let's try 168. No, it's going down. So let's try 162. Uh, now let's see 158. Yeah, 0.174. And again, uh, for getting a damping ratio of 0.174 our SD is slightly different that is if I have negative 0.678 plus or minus 0.33 J negative 0.678 plus or minus 3.83 J I think I just said 0.3 is incorrect 3.83 J okay we get K P is approximately 158 okay bottom line is compared to our simple pre peak controller our K is only slightly different our poles are only slightly different but that's not the point the point is we're able to eliminate the steady state error due to step and satisfy the traps the transient response design constraint of zeta so we're running out of time. We're almost at the 20-minute mark. So what I'm going to do is I want to stop here. And in next lecture, we will look at how to do the lag compensator. We, let's say we cannot place the pole at the origin. We have to move it away from the origin. How does that work? 
but again the idea will be very simple in the sense that due to the nature of our compensators the zeros to the left of the pole we will see that this k will be approximately equal to our pure proportional controller and that will help us a lot in designing lag compensators all right see you next lecture